Hi everybody, um, really honored today to be invited up on the hill by my friend Barbara. And we're here doing advocacy for the Homeless Children's Youth Act that was just reintroduced into the House and the Senate, which I hear is kind of like a miracle. I'll have Barbara talk about it a little more, but even better, I have some guests here. This is Cynthia, and this is Brian. And Cynthia is spoke today up on the hill and about being a homeless youth. So you're gonna to need to speak up a little bit, but share, share a little bit about your story. Well, back when I was like 17, I've been couch surfing for a while. How long have you been couch surfing? For about two, three years. Oh my gosh. And going to school? And going to school and working. And working. But from couch to couch? Couch to couch. What's that like? It's horrible. Now why? Because like, I don't know when I'm going to get kicked out and where my next place is going to be at. Now you were saying you're using social media to find places to stay. Yeah, I get on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, just talk to my friends and family and see if I can come stay with them. And then somebody lets you stay for a bit. And then someone will tell me I gotta go. And you never know when that's gonna be. No. Nope. It's gotta be a horrible feeling. It's very horrible. Oh my gosh, so sorry. And hopefully today, or in the near future, because this campaign's going to go for a while, you all are going to help us do something about that. Yes. And Brian is now in housing, which is a good thing, because that's what we want to get these kids into housing. Absolutely. But you have a similar story. Yes. Um, I've pretty much been homeless four years off and on. Um, it varied. Uh, my last recent homeless uh, incident was like August. Uh, I got kicked out, got my money taken. Uh, my step parents had kicked me out. Um, I got introduced to this place called Star House. Uh, went to a shelter. They didn't help me find shelter. Uh, I mean, they didn't help me find uh, housing. I found housing myself. Uh, Worked out, worked it out. Uh, had good friends and good teachers at school uh, to help me uh, on my mission. Um, I pretty much. Uh, hang out here. Hang out here. Yo, pretty, you you were you know going from couch to couch yeah, yourself. Much, I pretty much was going from couch to couch, uh, trying to make it, trying to make ends meet. Uh, I had a baby on on the way. In the midst of all of that, uh, got a baby who's due. Um, so I really much, I pretty much had to uh, get out there and get it on my own, do some things, uh, make some moves happen, and try to get me uh, my own housing. Cause when nobody help me, just like my friend here, when nobody help her, uh, uh, I'm thankful today because I have my own housing now. Uh, got a child on the way, and still going to school trying to graduate. So, so Barbara, first tell me about this great organization that you're the executive director, that Invisible People is partnering alongside some of the organizations here to help advocate for this bill because we have to pass it to help kids. Kids should not be homeless. Tell us what's happening, why we have a need for this bill, what was monumental about today, uh, the representatives and senators that are helping make push this through because they are heroes. <laughs> yes, they are. Um, I am the actually the policy director for the National Association for the Education of Homeless Children and Youth. We are people who are working in public schools and community agencies to identify children and youth who are experiencing homelessness make sure they get in school, have supports to succeed in school, and obviously housing is critical to being successful in school. So that's where we have a dog in this fight. Um, the legislation today, the Homeless Children and Youth Act, is monumental. It is bipartisan, it is bicameral, which means House and Senate, and it was reintroduced today to a room full of congressional staff and others who were hearing directly from young people, hearing directly from liaisons and service providers about why this bill needs to pass and why there's urgency behind it. We have too many young people, too many children and families 
who aren't recognized and who aren't able to access the supports they need to get back on their feet. So the foundation of this bill is really HUD Housing and Urban Development, which is a great organization, not trying to slam anybody. Um, they do a point in time count and they collect data on homelessness. It's very important that we have data. However, HUD excludes a certain demographic, which happens to be homeless families, homeless youth. As a family case manager in Los Angeles, when I worked in homeless services, I literally would have to turn families away. Let's say a family had lost their job, lost their income, and stayed in a hotel for a while, but then came to us because they didn't have any place else to go and lost their, their money. We would have to say, sorry, we can't help you. You have to sleep in your car for a night, or you have to sleep outside on the grass for a night with your children because HUD does not classify you as homeless, so we cannot offer you support. I literally turned homeless families with homeless kids away. That, to me, is a disgrace. So what this bill basically is saying is that the Department of Education, which counts homeless youth all year long, is saying there's approximately 1.2 million homeless youth. You know who's not being counted by the Department of Education? Their younger siblings. So that number is actually a lot more. However, HUD in their last point in time count has a different number. When you do the math, that means our government, HUD, Housing and Urban Development, is not recognizing 900,000 900, homeless children and youth are invisible, invisible to our government. And as one of the speakers said today, it's almost as if they saying that homeless youth and homeless children do not matter. So tell us about more what this bill is going to do and why people should support it. The bill does three important things. The first thing it does is it allows somebody who's running a HUD program, a HUD homeless program, um, to just say, you know what, you are staying somewhere temporarily because you have nowhere else to go, or you're staying in a motel, you're eligible, you, you can access services. It also allows that uh, same provider to accept a referral from the school liaisons, from youth programs, from others who are really identifying the reality of child and youth homelessness. So it breaks down barriers to accessing services. Second thing it does is it tells local communities, you know what, you know your community, we're going to honor your own needs assessment. So HUD would no longer be allowed to say, that's nice, you got an issue with families, we want you to, to, to prioritize adults instead. If a community wanted to prioritize adults, because that was what, what the needs were, it could do that, but it also would really be free to conduct its own needs assessment and use the funds it has in the best way possible. Third thing the bill does is require all federal programs who are serving homeless people to have their data be part of a report to Congress. So Congress doesn't see the skewed image from HUD, but really sees a composite picture of what all federal agencies are doing. It has a true sense of the scope of this issue. So there's urgency behind this because people, kids, families are being turned away and they're at a critical age of their life and we need to help them. And there's urgency to it because communities need to learn, need to be able to use the dollars they have in the best way possible. And um, to me, I think honesty is the best policy. I mean, let's be real. We need to be real. We can't pretend this crisis doesn't exist. The other side of the argument says, well, we want to focus on street homelessness. And yeah, that's important, but we need to end all homelessness and skewing the numbers, cooking the books, playing this game, and excluding you know, 900,000 homeless youth is unacceptable. And, you know, to me, we need to fight all homelessness. We need to fight all homelessness. And Brian's lucky. He's got a place. We need to get you a place. Yes, and there's hundreds of thousands of younger girls and guys and families out there that need help. Well, tell us about that. It's terrible. All the young the little girls and guys are always outside. They don't know where they're going. 
They don't know who they can go get help from because nobody wants to help them. That's so, terrible. Go ahead. They don't know their next meal. They don't know uh, the next time where they can get a cold or a cozy or a warm place to lay their head at, at night. Uh, they gotta worry about if their people's and when when they if they their family members gonna kick them out. If they with their family members and their family members don't want them there, you can. I mean, people not dumb. They can they can sense that vibe. They can sense that tension when their family members don't want them there. So the next best thing is to do is go somewhere else. Um, it's it's hard not it's hard to uh, to not be classified homeless uh, when you're in the sh only if you're in the shelter or you're on the streets when you're couch to couch to couch house to house to house uh, worrying about your next meal worrying about the next time you're gonna have somewhere warm to lay your head at it's a lot of stress especially when you got babies on the way you got you got school to deal with and you got many other things that you have to deal with a lot of other decisions that you have to make um, it's really hard it's kind of uh, uh, overwhelming for people as youth like us that's uh, trying to make something out of life, it's really hard for us to push through and progress the things that we need to get and make in life. Yeah. Um, have you tried to access services? Yeah, but I've got turned down. You get turned down because you don't qualify. Yeah. I, I mean, Same. Oh my gosh. So they're invisible to our government, and that's what this is about. And please, I am not, I'm going to ask you all to support this. I am not saying stop supporting street homelessness. We need to. I was a street homeless person. You know, we need to keep fighting veterans homelessness. Horrible. We need to keep the pressure on to end all veterans homelessness. That's a no-brainer. But kicking kids to the side while we're ending, if you know any veteran, they would put their life for kids. You know what I mean? Come on. Let's support Homeless Children Youth Act. There's going to be some information below this in the comments of the YouTube video and also the post uh, for you to be able to take action. Uh, I've committed to this. Invisible People's committed to this. I know Barbara and many other organizations, youth organizations, and advocacy groups are continuing to this. It's going to be a little bit of a battle. We need you. You're the general public. You are who the representatives are going to listen to. Contact your local representative now. Let's keep emailing, tweeting, Facebooking, phone calls. Show up at the door and say, hey, this is unacceptable that our government does not even recognize 900,000 homeless children and youth. I mean, come on, we got to make a change somewhere when I start today. Mm -hmm.